Included in the box are the user manual and the installation manual, the four parking sensor heads and their leads. The, the leads connect with a waterproof connection. Important, these are pushed together tight. Do not cut the leads as they're a tuned audio cable. The control box, the main control loom has a plug that connects back into the control box. When fitting, when marking out parking sensors on the rear bumper, the first thing to establish is the centre line. This can be done via the rear catch, or in this case, from a symmetrical point on the vehicle, which gives us that centre line. Once the centre line is established, we then like to get the parking sensor heads within 300 millimetres of that centre line. The rule of thumb for the outside of the vehicle is that the parking sensor needs to be in at least 200 millimetres from the horizontal line down the side of the vehicle. We would then try and work out an even spacing across the vehicle. And height-wise, do not be tempted to measure off the ground as the vehicle may be on an angle. We need to establish an even measurement down from a swage line or up from a swage line so that they look uniform across the back of the vehicle. Once those measurements are established, we simply put some lines on the vehicle this way and then a horizontal line on the vehicle this way. Then those are drilled through the tape with a pilot hole and then through again with the hole saw. Before drilling anything, it's very important to establish what is behind the bumper, which is normally done by a view from underneath the car, as the sensor heads must have enough room to fit before hitting any bodywork. Often bumpers on modern cars now are filled with foam. This is not an issue. Once the hole is drilled, it can simply be cleared via um, the outside of the hole and a long screwdriver. The loom is also run through at this point so that it doesn't interfere with or pull tight across any sharp objects behind. It's important to run the looms and leave the loom out through the hole to the connector so that there is room to then connect the head and push it back in. The loom needs to be kept high and, and strapped to a part of the body so that it can't fall down onto any top exhaust. The loom should be laid with excess out so that the head, sensor heads can be serviced at a later date. The holes need to be ground out with a round file if they are too tight so that the sensor head can be easily removed and refitted. The sensors must be the correct way up. They are marked with a small arrow on the back of the head. The sensor must be a slightly loose fit as pressure will cause false alerts. Must not push the sensors in the center, only via the outer rim. Sensors must not angle down. They must be on a horizontal plane or angled slightly up. This will avoid false alerting. When ordering a kit for a ute, the kit comes with longer leads to bring the control box back into the cabin of the vehicle. And if the vehicle has a steel bumper, it also will come with some plastic inserts. These are to be used in every steel bumper installation where the standard 18.8mm hole is substituted for a 25mm hole saw which takes this insert. The purpose of this insert is so that the parking sensor is seated in plastic rather than steel which causes vibrations and false alerts. These also come as a standard zero degree angle and also as a five degree angle to add a further angle to the parking sensor. These are also very useful when replacing an old set of parking sensors fitted by a third party that 
may be bigger than the 18.8 millimeter parking sensor head it can then be drilled out to take this oversized ring and the parking sensor can then go into that. The standard parking sensor head comes as standard with a three degree angle on the bottom of the parking sensor surround. Where you are struggling to find a vertical face and the bumper angles back in underneath the vehicle, that can be counted by removing this ring and replacing it with a six degree ring or in a very extreme case, we have a 13 degree ring. These rings are very easily changed over by simply clicking the tab on the bottom of the sensor head and replacing with the larger angle. This has a divot on the top to show the top. It's clicked at the bottom first and then slid over the head until you hear the firm click. The parking sensor heads are all marked on the back with an arrow and up. In the situation where a plastic bumper has an extremely large angle falling away and the 13 degree parking sensor head is not enough to counter that, it can be coupled up with the 6 degree insert to give a combined of over 20 degree to combat that large angle. We only supply parking sensor heads in black or silver. When painting the parking sensor head it does not need disassembling and it should be painted with as thin a layer of paint as possible. Major buildups of paint can limit the effectiveness of operation. If the vehicle is fitted with a large tow bar or a spare wheel on the back, there is a small switch on the control box which can be flicked which will move the danger zone out 200 millimeters to allow for the extra depth. If the vehicle is fitted with a permanent object that interferes with the field of the parking sensors, it can be programmed out to ignore that obstacle by putting the vehicle into reverse 10 times. Each time the unit will beep, on the 10th time the unit does not beep for 6 seconds, after that six seconds, it has permanently deleted that object out of, out of its field. The first thing to establish when fitting a rear parking sensor is where the internal control box is going to mount, and that is established through where the factory grommet is that the sensor wiring will exit the car interior from. We must find a grommet that can be in such a position that the wiring exits downhill as it goes from the car interior. This is to ensure that no water can trace back up that wiring and into the vehicle. Once this is established, the wiring is taken and lain from the position of the sensor heads in the bumper and back through into the vehicle with any excess wiring then bunched together and safely clipped away. The sensor heads are all marked A, B, C and D and the control box is also marked. These sensor heads are plugged into the control box and then as a double precaution the control box is then taped over so that those plugs cannot come out. The main power wire is also plugged into the box at this position and that includes a reverse power feed from the rear reversing lights and an earth. The rear parking sensors are available with a display as an option. When they are fitted with the display, the display mounts in the centre of the headlining, normally as close to the top of the rear windscreen or tailgate as possible. This is put into position with a couple of screw holes. It's normal to drill a small hole underneath the display head and take the loom and plug straight up through that. In this case we've run the wire out the back and the plastic trim goes hard up against this therefore disguising all wire. It's very important to remember do not leave the wiring exposed as this makes it look very aftermarket. Once that has been mounted and the screws just go up into the headlining as it's just a cosmetic look then the plastic cover it then clips over top, making it look very factory. 
in the plastic cover is a small hole for a paper clip. That hole is a volume adjustment where one push completely mutes it. The next push gives low and then the final push gives high volume. The wiring loom is then simply run down the rear pillar and plugged into the control box. The other option for rear parking sensors is audible only and in that case we would mount the speaker up on the rear pillar of the vehicle. In addition to this, if the volume is too loud, the speaker can be wrapped in tape to quieten it down.